Hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Tech where we are currently needing to do a little bit of repairs here. I mean the Awesome and the Black Knight are in progress, right? But we're not really too concerned about getting those done. We'll see how it goes. But we're going to go to the month tick here for sure. Here's the month tick. And our funds are low, shall we say. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll be fine on that front. Okay, let's take a look here. We definitely want to do something more like that. But, I mean, do we wait on the awesome? I really don't think we do. Okay, I think now is when we deploy. So let's hop into our barracks and do a little bit of mech warrior training here, as we tend to do at the start of every one of these episodes, it feels like. But, I mean, that's usually when it's best to do, so here we are. We'll hop into the mech bay, make sure there's nothing else that we need to do. Indeed, there is not. Okay. Let's deploy. So what do we want to do? We want something that will give us money, and we want something that will give us a pretty good chance at double heat sink kits. Thinking about this escort mission? Or perhaps this recovery mission. But I think that... I think this escort mission is the one to go for. So we'll go ahead and negotiate that. Hang on, that's an escort. I was thinking that was an ambush convoy mission. Capture base is actually better for us because there's a very good chance that the turrets have double heat sinks. Yeah, let's do this. This is only like 30,000 sea bills different as well. So we'll do something like this, make ourselves a little bit of money, and we should be able to deploy this exactly as is. Yeah, that'll be fine. Let's do it. So yeah, something with turrets because turrets have a very, very high chance to have double heat sinks, I've noticed. So that should be good. Although I don't know if you can salvage from double heat sinks dropped from turrets. I think you can. No, you definitely can. You definitely can salvage things that are not destroyed on turrets. So that'll be great. And we'll see what kind of a garrison we're up against. It's going to be interesting, to be sure. This is what? Uh, two skull? Two and a half? Something like that. So maybe a heavier two. But overall, we're not expecting anything that we're going to be too interested in salvaging. It's probably just going to be mediums, if I'm honest. In fact, that's kind of for the best, if it's just mediums. We want to get in and out with relatively little damage, and we want to salvage some heat sink kits. So we need to capture the logistics depot. We've been tracking the movement of several Davian convoys, and that's allowed us to pinpoint their destinations, a hidden, well-defended logistics depot. This facility is a key supplier for Davian forces in this region, and taking it from them will significantly damage their efforts against us. We'd like you to drop in, take the depot, and hold out against any enemy reinforcements. This should be straightforward. Move up, recon the depot, and occupy it. Okay, let's do exactly that. Oh, this looks very straightforward. This looks deserted. Oh, right. It's capture base, not destroy base. <laughs> yeah, that makes more sense. Okay, we're just going to deploy here. We know there's a Davian support lance out there. Okay. Garrison was on patrol, and they're on the way back. There are no turrets. That's unfortunate. But uh, it's a capture base mission, and I should have re I should have realized that. That's definitely my fault. We can't currently move. I'm pretty sure it's processing. Uh, we've got ourselves. Yeah, it was processing indeed. We've got ourselves a warrior, a warrior, a something. And is that it? Is that all they've got? We're gonna reserve here and let them move first. There's no way that we're going to. This is a support lance. This is not the garrison lance. Okay. That's a weird place to drop a vehicle, but... Is that inside of the cliff? That is inside of the cliff. Nice. Great place to drop a vehicle. <laughs> okay, so which one of these was the one that moved? It was this one. So we're going to position... Oh, it's over here. A Brutus.
Those hit odds would be pretty bad. We're going to position our Centurion AH over here. Affirmative. We're going to fire on this warrior. Our hit odds on the LRM aren't the best because of the range here. But let's go ahead and see how this goes. Copy that. Solid hits there, but no kill. The Venator moves up. Does not hit. It's to be expected. This guy moves phase 11. Same with this carrier over here. The warrior does a whole lot of nothing to our centurion there. That's fine. Receiving you. So our Orion is going to move back over here, and we are going to kick this Brutus in its rear arc and see how this goes. It's probably going to go pretty poorly, but I want this Brutus dead. Acknowledged. Gaging. We did hit the kick. It's a structure exposure. Oh, wow. We hit everything there. Reporting. One the odds on that were low. I expected everything to miss. Waiting for orders. Well, that Brutus isn't going to be able to use its four missile weapons now. My way. So we're going to fire on whichever warrior we have better hit odds on. It will be this one. Are we going to fire the Midrin? Honestly, I think we will. We don't have sensors because it's round one, but I think this will be fine. That's a kill. Honestly, this is going really well. We're getting some good rolls here. The Hunchy is going to step up over here, and we're going to see what our best hit odds are going to be here. It's going to be Artemis. Okay, light him up. It's a lot of missiles there. Yes, Commander. Our Battlemaster will move up over here. I copy. We don't really have LOS on this guy for now. And we're not going to fire the improved heavy laser for sure. I think everything else is okay. Roger that. 75% destruction of the Lance on round one. Reporting one left. That is slightly crazy, right? And then they managed to not hit the carrier at all. Okay. So our salamander is going to position like up here. I think we're not going to fire. The Chandra does manage to make it out of the cliff. So there's that. Our chameleon can get into position up over here, and it's obstructed LOS, but it is LOS nonetheless. So we're going to fire on this carrier. That's a lot of missile weapons. And we're going to hope that we get good rolls here, but honestly, I doubt it. I really doubt it. Yeah, that's more like what I expected there. They didn't say anything about collateral damage in the base, so... <laughs> we're going to move up with our Wolverine, but we can't get into LOS of that carrier. The carrier will get to fire, and hopefully it'll make a bad decision. That was a hit there, and it panicked the carrier. I'm going to call that a bad decision. It didn't fire. So the Wolverine... Oh, there's a uh, dropship inbound to there. But the Wolverine is going to position here, and we're going to fire on that hybrid carrier. We don't know what the, all these missile weapons are, and honestly, we don't want to find out. Take this. Fantastic. Smoke them. Okay. Commander? This is probably Sumire over here, but let's make our way up over Burn. and position for it. On the off chance that that's where the garrison is going to drop. What's up, boss? So the Orion is going to pop up over here Confirmed. and sink heat. Yes, Commander. We're just planning that this is where the back. enemies are going to spawn. We don't know that at all, for a fact. Ready That's uh, a complete assumption. On the move. And we'll see. Confirmed. The Chameleon is actually going to move out over here to hedge our bet. And let's see what our allies decide to do. A lot of nothing. I mean, we don't expect them to do much. And then our salamander is going to actually back off a little bit and position back over here. And our hunchy is going to position like here and sink that heat. We've exited combat. I'm 
gonna brace everyone right now. I've got eyes on hostile reinforcements. They're heading your way. Okay. So the Ostrock is gonna charge our hunchback, and that will hit. So that'll be a knockdown on the hunchy, but that's okay. That is a structure exposure wear. Those charges do a lot of damage. It's in that torso. Okay. That's slightly problematic, to be sure. Because the Spectre immediately moves up and also melees the Hunchback. Before we had a chance to respond to any of it. But, this is fine. As long as the Hunchback survives this hit. Which it does. Internal structure damage. I don't believe they have anyone else. I think it's just these two. And the charge, of course, th there is a drop ship inbound to here, of course, but the charge here means that this Ostrock is in severe danger right now. Absolutely severe. Reporting internal damage. So the Ostrock is now unsteady. Orders. Our Centurion is, this is our long range Centurion, is going to head up over, I would love to get up over here somewhere. Actually, I'm going to reserve it. This is not the turn to move that. The Zephyr is not going to fire. The Battlemaster is going to move in on the Spectre here. We don't have a rear arc on it, but that's okay, I think. He has four evasive. I've changed my mind. We're going for the Ostrock. As a kick. That's quite a lot of misses. For the hit odds we were expecting. Critical hit. Okay, that's a knockdown on the Ostrock. The Chandra moves up, doesn't really do anything. At this point. We're going to move the Chameleon in over to... This is Rear Arc on the Spectre, but I don't like it. We're going to reserve, actually. Both of their units have moved. We're going to reserve all the way to Phase 3 now. So that we can get our Hunch back up so that we don't Stray Shot that. So we're going to reserve all the way to Phase 3. The Hunchback is going to stand up. Now Paladin is, ble is bleeding out, but we have plenty of time for this. We're going to move over here. Oh, we can't melee. That's right. What we can do, though, is position so that our right side is facing them. So we're going to want to position something kind of like this. Location confirmed. And then I think we're just going to brace the Hunchback. Standing by. Now we're much less likely to damage the Hunchback. We're going to come in with the Orion over here. And we're just going to hit that Ostrock. It's a lot of damage. I'm surprised he got cover while knocked down there, but okay, that's fine. The Salamander is just going to walk in over here and also melee. We're not going to fire the arrows, the arrow fours, obviously. And that'll be fine. Do it. Acknowledged. 80 more damage into that Ostrock. Interestingly, that missed, but okay, that's fine. Okay. At this point, I want to use our Midrin Centurion. Get into this rear arc, and I would like... We can't actually melee from this rear arc, but we can move here. I'd like to move here. I'd like to precision fire the Midrin. I was hoping to make him unsteady with that. It unfortunately did not happen, but we'll still position over here with our Chameleon. Still run the armor piercing. Okay. That's an engine crit on that Spectre. And our long range Centurion is just going to pop over to here. Unfortunately, the Hunchback is kind of in the line of fire here. Yeah. We did manage to hit the Hunchback with one of those. I was hoping to prevent that, but that's fine. So they're going to move in phase 22 with the Spectre, and we'll see what they decide to do. 
They're probably going to continue moving after the Hunchback, is my guess. Okay, that's a very odd move. Not one that I would have made. And I'm completely okay with it. Completely and totally okay with it. Um, actually, this is not a terrible obstruction. This'll be fine. We'll move here. The LOS obstruction is on the tower, not on our chameleon. So we're just going to pot shot this. I'm not going to fire the binary laser, but everything else. And we're hoping to make him unsteady. And it looks like we might get there. Not quite. Okay. Our ally isn't really doing much there. The Battlemaster is going to look to finish the Ostrock. This should definitely finish it. That's a successful melee. A whole lot of damage there. He's actually still alive. No damage on that Spectre. That cover actually doing work on that Ostrock. Standing by. So the Hunchy is actually going to position out over here. And we're going to fire on that Spectre. And we're going to fire with not Artemis, but rather Deadfire. These are really bad hit odds, and it is... Mostly because weapon accuracy plus six, target moved plus eight. Fair enough. Medium range, obstructed, into forest. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. ECM shield as well. All we have to do is hit it with like one thing. And the specter is unsteady. Everything I've got. And we didn't. We didn't hit it with a single one of those. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the odds were not fantastic on it, but we're going to move up with our Midrin Centurion. And the odds will be substantially better here. There we go. We hit with two of those. He lost his evasive. The Zephyr fires on the Ostrock. And that's not great. But okay. Our Chameleon is going to move in for the rear arc attack, actually. We can get away with. And so we shall. Light him up. Looks like you're out of there we go. One down, Time one to go. Trash, yes, Commander. The Orion is going to walk in over here, and melee, we're only going to fire the one ER large. This Ostrock can't take too much more of this. There we go. That's more like it. <laughs> Hope we can that. Okay. So, I don't know that we're really going to get much for heat sink kits out of this, but... We didn't really take much damage, and uh, realistically, I don't think the Hunchy even really took all that much damage. I think it's completely fine. Let's see what we get from Salvage here. Hopefully, it'll be something that is worthwhile. 410,000 sea bills, and yeah, a little bit of armor damage, but nothing too major. So, I mean, we could Salvage an Ostrock. I'm not sure that we're interested in one. But are we interested in anything else? And there's an indirect FCS here. Indirect plus, rather. We are interested in that. Nothing as far as heat sinks go. I mean, we only need three parts for this. So we could do this and just have it in our back pocket. Not ready yet. But just have it there just in case we end up needing a backup mech. That way we won't have to pay for the... Oh, I should have sold components there, but I guess that's fine. But that way we won't need to pay for the monthly upkeep on it. But we'll have it ready to go if we need it. I would also, since we're coming back a little bit early here for putting a cut in, I would like to take a look at that Hector and see if we can put something together for it. That would be very nice if we could. However, our cash is going to be very much on the low side. Maybe we can't. We'll have to see. How much is this going to cost? Oh, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. So top priority is going to be the Black Knight, followed by the Awesome, followed by the Hunchback. Yeah, that's okay. 
Let's go ahead and hop into the mech bay here and just see if we can put anything together for the Hector. We can always scrap parts and sell equipment if we need to to get the money to deploy again. That'll be fine. So let's just see what we've got here. It's got primitive armor. We'd like to max out that armor. What is this icon? Carrying ammo that I can't use. Oh, right. Right there. There we go. So it's got an engine heatsink plus two as well as an engine... Engine Core 340. That's not bad. We could just plop in a Clan Heatsink kit here. That could work. And then as far as two slots go. We could run, like, dual leg-mounted AC5s. We're overweight right now, obviously. Uh, we would run... Parafibrous armor and endosteel structure for sure. That's still overweight with the dual AC5s. Okay. We only have eight tons to work with here. Oh, it's because we have a primitive engine. Yeah, that'll do the trick. Uh, we want a standard engine here, I think, ideally. Pretty sure we've got one, right? We actually don't. We could run a light engine. That's going to be spendy. That gives us 20 tons to work with. I thought for sure we had a stand. Oh, it's right here. At the bottom. Okay, a standard fusion engine. Yep. There we go. That's going to be better. It's The reason it's better, it's not that much cheaper. It's that it doesn't have parts in our other torsos. Now, we have an engine core 340. What is our... We could run an engine heatsink plus three in this. We could run this engine heatsink. That would give us a lot of heat efficiency to work with. Hmm. We don't have the tonnage for dual ultra AC5s, although that would be good. That'd be really good. Okay, like, in terms of ideal, right? Ideal... Oh, those are quite a lot larger. Never mind. They don't have the slots. We could run mag shots or AP gausses. We could actually run AP gausses here. Those use mag shot ammo. Do we have any mag shot ammo? Do -do -do. Mag shot ammo. Yes. We have two tons of mag shot ammo. So we could run like this. That'll be fine. And that's primarily going to be like an armor strip sort of thing, right? So then we could run in our energy slots. Yeah, Gauss, light Gauss rifles are way too big as well. We could run mag, just straight up mag shots instead. That said, AP Gauss rifles do a little bit more damage, although it's spread out. And they do have that 50% crit bonus. Are they also not volatile? They are volatile. Okay, good to know. And then we could run... We have nine tons to work with. We could almost get away with running a pair of ER large lasers. I would be fairly unimpressed with this loadout, though. Hmm... We have an Engine Core 340 in this. Heavy PPCs would be funny, but not really what we're looking for. AP Gauss Rifles have what kind of range? Max of 390, optimal of 240. So regular PPCs are a little longer range than that. Interesting. I mean, we could go with something much, much smaller, right? Like, we could go with dual plasma cannons here. We wouldn't have the tonnage for that. That uses ammo. But that does go in an energy slot. We don't really have plasma ammo, I don't think. Uh, where would that be? I'm sure there's a search box in, in here. That would be nice, actually. But, alas, that's not the case. No, we can't really run that. We don't have ammo for it. We could, however, 
run this. You want to not be moving with it, though, and we do have that engine core 340. We could run the medium X pulse laser here. That's about the right range, right? Yeah, that's about the right range. I would like to run another one over here, but we could run an improved heavy laser, a medium improved heavy laser over here. Like this. That's plenty heat efficient. In fact, that's overkill on the heat efficiency. We could drop the engine heat sink plus three and put the engine heat sink plus two back in. That's still plenty. And I do not believe we require external heat sinks. No. In fact, we could just straight up drop the internal heat sinks. And that would free us up an additional amount of tonnage. We're having a bit of a hard time filling this tonnage with these hard points, though. This is not a great mech, right? And we knew that. It's it's not a great loadout. Not a great hardpoint loadout, specifically. However, with that extra tonnage... That would allow us to have two weapons that are six tons each. That would be clan ER PPCs, but not ER PPCs. We could run light PPCs, but I think that's useless. I like the X-Pulse and the improved heavy laser. I just wish we had some way to use this tonnage. Maybe we do if we revisit what's going on in the legs. There's just so few slots to utilize these, right? That's the issue here. The stock loadout here is a pair of large lasers in these arms. That's okay, but not really what we're looking for, I think. If only we could run Ultra AC5s down there. That would be kind of ideal. Or even if we could just run, like, the AC-10 Midrin, or... The regular AC-10 is also three slots. We could run standard AC-5s. And that might be worth pursuing. We even have the HV AC-5. Do we have ammo for that? I don't think so. Actually, we do. We do have a ton of ammo for that. Now, we're going to have to store this ammo somewhere kind of awkward, like the CT. We would really prefer not to have it there, but... We could also store it, like, out in the torsos. I would also really prefer to not have it there. Honestly, I think the CT is the best spot for it. It's not a good spot for it. But given this loadout, I mean, maybe we just say if the Hector gets blown up, the Hector gets blown up. It's a mediocre mech at best. We're going to run into weight issues with the dual AC-5s. We're going to need ammo for the AC-5. That's 20 shots, so that's more than enough ammo there. So we need to find a way to trim 5 tons from this. We can drop our engine core. We don't need a 340 in this. So we can drop the engine core 340 down to, say, a 250. That would give us 10 tons remaining. That's our next highest one, though. What's the optimal range on the AC-5? Ten four twenty, and... I'm actually thinking about putting the variable pulse laser in this. Like that. Now that we would want additional heat sinks in. Which we can't do. We can't get there from here. We simply cannot get there from here. Okay. This is 10 tons available. Maybe we do run the heavy PPCs? We can't quite get away with that. We could get away with ER PPCs. Almost. 
We could almost get away with ERP PCs. If we drop this weight a little bit more, which we could do by dropping this from a 250 to a 240, then that would basically work. Then we would just drop a little bit of armor in these legs, something like this-ish. That would work. Our heat efficiency isn't great. We do have a free heat sink, but we don't have a clan double heat sink. Ah, that's not going to work. We just can't get there from here, can we? We have to run the engine core 250 so that that way we don't have the external heat sink. Now we're one ton overweight. Okay, we want a PPC FCS in this for sure. We want to replace the primitive cockpit and the primitive sensors, if we can. A sensor tracker, I think, will be decent here. That actually does save us the weight that we need. And then, do we have a cockpit to replace here? I don't think we do. Oh, we do. A cockpit basic, right there. That does give us an additional ton to work with. Okay. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily mind tossing the heat exchanger in here because that will help our heat efficiency tremendously, like extremely tremendously. It makes this completely fine. So what do we want to do with this extra one ton? I'd normally just toss a heat sink in. We could go for AMS of some type. Um, this is probably weighing half a ton. Okay, do we have a half ton of AMS ammo? Saw it up here. No, we don't have half a ton of AMS ammo. We'd have to free up half a ton to run AMS on this. Okay. What else could we theoretically run? Hmm. I mean, we can run chaff countermeasures. That's the thing we can do. Or AMS flare. Yeah, let's run the AMS flare on there. Okay. I suppose we could bring tag along. That would fill that ton. You know what? Let's do it. Just in case we're in close enough. We shouldn't be in close enough with this. I guess that'll do. I guess that'll do. Now, this will put us in debt. On it. We're almost completely out of cash. I'm aware. So we're going to need to get rid of some components here. And that is definitely something that we are willing to do. So things like this bushwhacker part, I'm probably not going to get a bushwhacker going. Our next thing is just about gone oh, I'm aware. I'm very, very aware of this. This race can definitely go. I mean, We're I'm really looking for vehicle parts here. Vehicle parts are much better for scrapping. I think we should have some. Did we not salvage any vehicle parts in that last mission? Maybe we didn't. I guess if if not, we can get rid of things like the Enforcer 3. Oh, here's one right next to it. Yes, I'm aware. <laughs> ah, that's 102k. That's a solid one. Fantastic. The Shadowhawk is a decent one that we can get rid of. We're almost, our next thing is just about we only need about 300 more K. And this is something that I could theoretically do off camera. There's okay, not go. really any reason, I think, to continue doing this on camera. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a cut in here. And next episode, gone. we are going to have cash again. And then we are going to deploy. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.